Hello traders, this is Rich Derrick from TradeSite. This is the daily market preview for the coming session. This is going to be for Wednesday, April 24th, 2013. We had a fairly strong session today with the ES up about 17 and the NQs up 26 handles on the day with uh, strength pretty much across the board in, um, in most of the major sectors. The uh, market internals were, uh, were fairly good with uh, one notable exception that we'll talk about later. But uh, let's move on and take a look at the uh, at the charts of the uh, important futures contracts. All right, here's a look at the uh, the ES futures gaining on on yesterday's pivot to the upside off of that uh, inside day two sessions ago. We are now back above the 10 EMA, so we're on the north side of all three major moving averages: the 10, the 50, and the 200. I just want to point out that we are going going to be now 11 days up in this count in the seeker. Uh, Printed 10 days up yesterday. Tomorrow we're gonna we're gonna get our 11 candle. So we're getting fairly deep in the count here for an exhaustion. But uh, the one one thing to really note here is that our one candle is is about 1553. Today we're clo we closed 1573.50. So we we've made almost no progress to the upside in this count, which does make them more prone to failure and makes it more of a lateral range uh, than anything else. Note that this is going to be the second lateral range of the year. We had this one previously. We had we had a one bar here. We went all the way up to 13 uh, on the 11th of of March, and we really didn't didn't really make much headway at all. So this is kind of really a very unusual tape, just kind of grinding higher, as you will, with these little pullbacks in between. So for now, key levels overhead are going to be the previous high here, which is coincident with the 7 8 level in the Murray Math box. 1503 and three quarters. If they can take that out to the upside, 1625 at eight eighths will come in play, and that's going to be a very important and very strong level if traded. To the downside, if we turn back down, obviously, previous day's low, and the previous day low is going to have some additional punch to it because it's also where the 50 DMA resides. So for now, we're, we're lateral with, the, with a slight upward bias in the ES futures. Now the Nasdaq futures uh, pivoted again. They were up. Hot. They were up on the day. Uh, the one thing to note here is that we did close a, a, f a fair amount off the off of the high here. We did go up to trade this 8 ace level, which is a very key level here. 281250 has been used uh, for multiple months now. So until we take that out, there's uh, there's there's really not much to say besides us being lateral and having basically saved. This little drop to the downside. If we do continue higher, this plus one eighth level, 28.51 and a half comes into play. These are these prior high closes. And then if, the, if we can take that out to the upside, uh, then we can start looking at the two eighths level. But one day at a time here for now. Near term resistance, 28.12.50. Near term support where the 50 DMA resides at about 27.75. Now, as far as the uh, market internal goes, the uh, total put call ratio continues to retreat more more towards the midpoint after nearly touching the uh, reversal threshold. We didn't quite get it, but uh, but uh, very very close. So the market still has a little bit of oversold energy in it until we, until we uh, print the midpoint here of the uh, reversal uh, band for the total put call ratio. Here's here's a look at the 10-day trend. Uh, the trend today, intraday, closed uh, just under one. So what it did is it actually added on to the uh, to the uh, ten day average here. We actually moved up a little bit. We're at one point two five now. The uh, the trend for uh, for a good part of the morning was actually printing very very bearishly, like one point three three, one point three five, one and a quarter, which would have uh, gotten this pretty darn close to that oversold threshold but didn't print that. So even though the uh, the market's going higher, it's really doing it kind of grudgingly and really climbing the wall of worry here. So we've got that recent spike in the put call ratio that we just looked at. We've got this this 10-day trend that's actually approaching oversold, meaning there's energy to the upside in it rather than rather than an overbought reading as we as we move higher here. So for now there's there's still gas in the tank for the upside if the market so chooses. Here's a here's a look at the cumulative advanced decline lines. The uh, NQ Nasdaq side is uh, starting to uh, recover here a bit. It's uh, going to find resistance if it gets back up to this trend line that it broke. 
So for now, the uh, NASDAQ side of it is still in a downtrend and still very vulnerable. However, the, uh, the New York side, which, is, which I believe is the more important side, the broad market side, is still positive. We've yet broken this, uh, this trend line. This trend line is still held and is still positive. You'll see this roll over before you get a real break in the market. Real break in the market isn't going to happen when the uh, cumulative advanced decline line is still healthy. So for now, we're still okay as far as the advanced decline line goes. But uh, what we really want to focus is on, the, is on the New York Stock Exchange side of the uh, cumulative advanced decline line right up here. If this does break, then we've got to get really worried about, about some real downside. But until that, until that breaks, we're still going to be buyers of dips. NDX versus the SPX remains negative and will, and will be negative until we can take out this prior high. Um, really need to see some uh, relative strength come on here in the NDX. I think that's why we've got such a grinding, pounding up type of price activity in the ES futures and in, in, in the broad market in general. If this gets in gear, we could definitely see uh, some, some better momentum develop. But uh, until this really starts to, uh, starts to turn, until the NDX starts to perform better, I, I doubt that that's going to happen. Now here's a chart that we haven't looked at in a little while. This is the uh, oil futures versus the uh, OSX. So essentially the commodity versus the underlying stocks. We like to look at the OSX, the oil services, rather than the oil producers, the majors, like the Exxons and the Chevrons and whatnot, just because the uh, oil services move a little bit faster, they're, a little bit, little, they're actually a little bit more economic, economically sensitive. So they move a little bit faster and give us a little better lead. So what we're looking for here is we didn't really break down here in the OSX, which is the which is the red line, the uh, oil services uh, have been holding up here fairly well, but we did get this very very sharp break in crude, as they were really putting pressure on commo the commodity complex in general. But what we've seen is we haven't really seen the the oil oil uh, stocks buckle as far as the uh, oil oil futures themselves. So what we're expecting now is kind of a return back to the upside here, at least to the midpoint of this move from the top to the bottom here in the oil futures themselves. All right, and taking a look at taking a look at our uh, our risk on risk off metric, which is the S&P divided by the uh, US government bonds. In this case, the cash S&P divided by the TLT. You can see that we we've, we've broken down here, we are in a downtrend. We've got lower lows and lower highs in place. If we do pivot higher. Uh, we've really got to take out this uh, this uptrend that we've broken, but for now this is still indicating a loss of momentum in the market. And this is going to be kind of a kind of an anchor on the market overall. If we do start to uh, start to gather some strength in the uh, in the stock side versus the uh, government bonds, we're going to find resistance here at the breakdown level, which was the lower boundary of this channel and somewhere just above this prior high. So keep Keep this in mind. If we do take this out, then we can start looking higher again, and maybe develop some some real momentum in the market. But until this turns positive again, we're not going to have a whole lot of momentum in the market that's sustainable. All right. So here's a look at the uh, the sector watch list. We're going to take a look at the individual sectors now. Let's take a look at the uh, sectors ranked from uh, from best to worst. I'm just going to click on the uh, percent change here. You can see how we're setting up here. Uh, definitely, there was. Uh, some strength in the housing sector. That was a top gun on the day. The airlines were very strong. Computer hardware, computer hardware was strong, and that will really uh, kind of be uh, buffered by how uh, the Apple earnings are, are uh, taken tomorrow and what they do with those. BKX was kind of kind of mid range, but 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 decent. Did outperform the broad market. What uh, we really saw some uh, some lagging in the utility index, which is kind of a, a risk off index. XAU remains uh, really at the bottom of the list here. Still a source of funds. They're still using that to uh, to buy the uh, more growth-oriented stuff, and that hasn't pivoted yet. And the one unfortunate thing is we're really not close to any uh, any countdowns that would indicate a reversal. We're only six days down in the seeker. We need to get to 13 for an exhaustion. And we're only seven days down in the comer. Still need to get to 13. The utilities uh, do have a 13 in place on both sides, so expect them to have. Uh, either a lot of pressure to the upside where it's just hard for them to go higher right now or a possible reversal to the downside. Also the defense index has a uh, an exhaustion, exhaustion signal in place as well as the BTK. I think the BTK is definitely one that we're, we're going to want to watch the next couple of days. Earnings, earnings, earnings are starting to roll out now. We'll take a look at that chart in just a little bit.
All right, now here's a look at our uh, risk on risk off uh, metric in the uh, multi sector daily chart. You can see that we had a pretty decent performance out of the SOX today. The uh, banks were essentially flat. The BTK was uh, was fairly weak, with a uh, little bit of little bit of lagging lag as far as the uh, the overall market goes. Uh, and we did see a little bit, little bit of bad performance on a relative basis from the uh, from the uh, XAU. So it's starting to uh, arrest its descent, if you will. But uh, we really need to. Uh, to see these uh, start to come together here, and just the one point you want to make is is how stretched out the BTK is from the XAU. So even while on a relative basis they're starting to perform a little bit better and a little bit more more normal, there's a ton of room for this to really normalize. All right, now taking a look at the individual sectors, the uh, the SOX does have an active secret exhaustion signal in place that turned the the chart negative back in um, back in early March. We're uh, still kind of grinding to the downside here. We've made some lower lows and some lower highs. Right now, we're kind of bouncing back up here, but uh, we're below the two, uh, you know, midterm moving averages and the short-term moving averages. So we're below the 10 EMA and below the 50. Uh, expected resistance here at in a pivot point at the 10 EMA. We bounced today, but as you would expect, we found resistance there when it first interacted with that. If we continue back to the upside, expect some resistance here at the 50 at about 4.28. And if we roll to the downside again, uh, the candle the candle low from two days ago at 410 and a half is going to be near term support. If 410 and a half is lost in the in the socks, that's going to be going to be kind of really bearish here. It's going to it's going to open the door to 406 and a quarter, which is that important four ace level on the Murray Math chart. The BKX was uh, was up today and reasonably strong, but uh, is is still kind of slugging here and not really. Uh, not really performing uh, as it as it had, and definitely has some lower highs in place. And here's a look at the OSX. The OSX is uh, still trying to trying to pivot here and bounce back up a little bit, but I just want to point out that we do have a secret exhaustion in place up here. Those are very very flat. It's got very little extension above the one, which is something that always makes it a little bit less powerful than if you have good extension to the upside. But nonetheless, we do have do have this the signal in place. We're trying to uh, trying to get down here and keep working on this four ace level, but this four ace level at 234 and a half is very key support. Um, the market has not closed below that. There've been a couple tails below that key level, but we've not closed below that. If we do close below that, we'll lose half of the GAN box. Obviously, the next level that'll really come into play is going to be the 200 DMA, and then uh, if that's lost, then we're talking about the uh, zero ace level at 218. But we have to take this one candle at a time. Uh, if we do we continue to the upside here, uh, the, the 50 DMA is coming in about 243 and a half. That's going to be the next level, and then above that the 7 ace level at 246. The XAU on the day was, was weaker again, but is, is still using this uh, 100 level as support. The zero ace level is really key support here for the XAU, as it is for any uh, any any instrument or any any uh, stock that we're looking at, that zero ace level is very very important support. Right now we're just kind of in this lateral trading 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 range after this range expansion to the downside here after this recent breakdown. For now, near term support uh, is the zero ace level here or the lows, either one, and the uh, upside target on a bounce is going to be about 107 and three quarters, which is the 10 EMA right now. Here's the oil futures. The oil futures are bouncing off that uh, that oversold sweep under the zero waste level. This is how it usually performs. Sweep under there, kind of recoup that. Now we're now we're starting to interact with that 10 EMA. The 10 EMA is also roughly coincident with these prior lows, so it's kind of a double. That makes it kind of a double level. If they can if they can pivot this and head higher, we got a minor level at two waste at 90 and five waste, and then the big number is going to be the the 200 DMA at 91, just over 91 and a half. On the downside, near term, near term support at the zero race level, 87.50. And until we turn back above uh, the 10 EMA, we remain we remain short term negative. Gold futures, um, kind of a similar situation. They tried to push them higher, uh, but really couldn't get it through that that uh, that 10 EMA. That 10 EMA again is the uh, the arbiter. That defines whether we're short-term positive or negative, and until we uh, reclaim that 10 EMA and get on the north side of it, 
we remain short-term negative. That's going to be it for this evening. As always, thanks for listening. This has been Rich Derrick for TradeSite.